Yeah? Yes. You should have come with me, my dear. The night was pleasant. The footman has word of your brother's son. Where did you discover him? He lives with his grandfather, the gunsmith, at the port, Your Grace. This is the father of the woman whose name I gave you? Yes, Your Grace. And what is the boy's name? Jean Paul, Your Grace. Does he resemble his father? The image, Your Grace. You may go. Your humble servant, Your Grace. What are you going to do, Edouard? Well, the boy's place is here at the chateau. Even though he was born nameless, he is my brother's son. Why do you want him here? Why? Well, what would Paul think if he were alive, knowing I let his son grow up in the filth of the port? When he was alive, you never cared what he thought. Why this sudden sense of duty? I think I know why you want the boy here. Do you, my dear? Because you think he is the rightful heir to your title and estates. Nonsense. You're afraid that someday, somehow, he may prove his right. My dear wife, you know as well as I, there is no record of Paul's marriage. None, except Paul's own record while he lived. My noble brother. Now shall I tell you why I want his offspring here? As a present to you. His presence here would amuse me. And each day he will remind you of Paul and of the boy's mother. The woman Paul obviously referred to you. For me, my brother left a son. This boy, he is my own. Do you take me for a fool? Look at him. The eyes of my family. The chin. <laughs> the family temper, too. Command the truth. When my brother sailed for the Indies, your daughter was aboard. Yes, Your Grace, but romance at sea. Long voyage, the child. The fever struck them down, the boy survived. Is that not the truth? Yes, Your Grace. He's the son of the Marquis and of my daughter, Louise. Have you kept this knowledge from the boy? I thought it best. Well, Jean-Paul, now that you know who your father was, how'd you like to live with me at the Chateau? You had the blood in you? Though you were born on the wrong side of the blanket. You may brought up a gentleman. No claim on nobility, of course. But horses, a servant of your own, and all the rest that goes with it. I'm begging your gracious pardon. I think he's better off here with me. Would you deprive the boy of his birthright? He's mine, since the ship brought him home, a tiny thing. Can you read? No, Your Grace. This is a writ from the King's Court. It names me the boy's guardian and charges me with all responsibility for his welfare and future. So if you can get the boy clean, are these his only clothes? No, Your Grace. For holy days. Put them on him, please.
Well, here he is, my dear. Jean-Paul, this is the Marquise. And our daughter, the young Comtesse. They will be your mistresses. Mistresses of the boy? Naturally, I expect to find Jean-Paul something to occupy his time. The stables, I think. Edouard. Stable boy. The boy has pride like his father. Paul would never take anything that didn't belong to him, would he? The boy is the same. He'll be eager to work for his keep. Is that true, Jean-Paul? I'll take nothing that isn't mine to take. Well spoken. A true son of his father. Stable boy, teach him his duties. Yes, Your Grace. Father Benoit. Take these to the polished bench and mind you don't drag them in the dirt. I told you not to get them dirty. Now we twice the work. Off him. He's in my charge. I'm grace. master of the stables here, and there'll be no beatings. Get out. Unhitch the four. John Paul, lad, you hurt. Huh. I worked for your father, John Paul, when he was master here. I loved him. We all did. He let a man be a man, whether he was a peasant or bondsman. He made us proud to serve him, and we were happy. It's not like that now. Why don't you go away? Go? Where? We're bonded to the Marquis for life, as you are. You didn't know what was written on that parchment? I can't read, nor my grandfather. It's a grant from the court. He can do what he will with us. And he'll always have the law on his side. Make the best of it, lad. If you're wise, you'll submit like the rest of us. No. Yes. You'll learn as you grow. Mind what I told you. Why isn't the Count's mare in the forecourt? Because she lost her shoe. She's a very arbitrary female. He wants her ready immediately. Then he'll have to take her unshod. Pick up your skirts. You'll never learn, will you, Jean Paul? What? How to be respectful to your superiors. I'm always respectful to my superiors. Now you choose to be rude. You ladies are all alike, always accusing others of your own failings. Forgive me, madam. What do you think of Monsieur Le Comte de Bayeux? He's pretty. He's asked for my hand. So? I noticed he handled it at every opportunity. Are you jealous? A man has to be in love to be jealous. You haven't answered my question. And I don't intend to. I want an answer. Step off it, please. I want an answer. Were you jealous? Oh. 
jealous of anyone who touches you or even looks at you. I'm jealous of that idiot to buy you, of your father. Anyone who can be near you. Does that answer you? John Paul, the mayor. I'll come to you tonight. The same place. John Paul, hurry. You kept us waiting. The fault is mine, Your Grace. It was no one's fault, Your Grace. The mayor had a shoe loose. She would have thrown it. A sister, Monsieur Lecomte de Mount. Clumsy idiot. My apologies, Monsieur. He do that to you, son? He brought the clothes. Certainly you want them. If you're caught. Will these allow me to pass for gentlemen? I bought a fine hunting piece for them. They fit for a prince of the blood. Where would you go, son? Lose myself in Paris, Bordeaux. Ship out, I don't know. But if I stay here, I'll kill him. Could you send word to me? I'd come to say goodbye. Have you seen a man running this way? Near your soul. You are a visitor in this country. Aye, that I am. This is the private road of Marquis de Saint Malo. Would I be hurt in it, any? If so, I'll be treading on it more lightly. Who are you and where bound? I am a scholar. I seek a mission of priest in the village of Saint Malo by name Father Benoit. The village lies beyond the gate. Curie at the church. Enter. Your father, Benoit. Hey, man, I've come a far way to find you. I've come quarter way around the world. Your name was told me where you're well remembered. The Mayan Highlands, far off Guatemala. Guatemala? Uh, I am pleased that I'm remembered. I was told that you were not only a missionary, but a scholar of the ancient Mayan ways and writings. I felt it my duty to study their past that I might better understand them. Tis how I felt, Father. Indeed. To what purpose? Oh, maybe it was the scholar in me. I had once an ancient kinsman who was ascribed to the chief of the Dougals in the Highlands of Scotland. Hmm. Interesting. Do you think that that's why the parchments of the ancient Mayan people appeal to me? Mm-hmm. Uh, by chance, do you have a Mayan codex with you? It is a kind of a map. A kind of a treasure map. How do you know? My life has been devoted to looking into the hearts of people. So you found me out. No one sent one to me ahead? No, no, no. The Codex of the Golden Condor. Hmm. Where did you find it? It came my way ten years back. I've given my life to it since I, and more. 
you knew this existed? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But it was said that the seal of the golden condor was attended to the treasure map, a medallion of hammered gold. There's your seal, Father. Yes, yes, yes. This is the treasure place? Yes. And them bars and dots, and the footprints? Mm hmm You know these meanings? Oh, yes. Oh, then I haven't come in vain. Oh, if you but knew the monsters who have bled me dry with false readings of this, and who tried to steal it from me, aye, and who died for their wickedness. The hundreds of miles I've hacked. You have killed for this? In defense of my life. It was me or them. Them? More than one. Death is written on this. Oh, but surely as a man of God you have no truck with heathen superstitions? No, no, no. But I place the values of a human life above that of the gold and jade and emeralds written here. They are written there? Oh, yes. Emeralds from the south, the Inca country. Jade. Golden caskets. Gods. A whole inventory of treasure. But I will not translate the way to this place. In the name of heaven, why not? I ask for nothing free. There's a fortune for your parish in it. You can build a, a school with it. Think of the good you could do. And the evil? My conscience tells me that helping you find the treasure would be in the name of hell, not heaven, as you put it. Already men have died. You have a family. A child. My woman died. How did she die? Of a jungle fever. While you were searching for this? Yes, but uh, fever strikes many in the lowlands. Oh, no, I know. And I refuse to burden your conscience any further, or mine. I will not translate this. It's time for the Angelus. A good friend has asked me to share his food tonight. I know you will be welcome, too. said you'd come to me, you didn't. So I came to you. We must find another rendezvous. I'm leaving tonight. He'll never let you get away. He'll have you followed, captured, branded as an example to the others. I intend to set a better example by escaping and not being captured. And what of me? What of all we could have together? If the title were mine, we could have everything. Is that why you're going? To seek the title? But if my father loses the title, then I lose mine, too. I wouldn't be a countess anymore. I have only one interest in the title. It would give me the right to marry you. That's why you must wait for me. Marie, return to our guests. Come with me. Bring the lantern. seen any exhibitions of the new English sport called pugilism? Of course you haven't. It was demonstrated recently before a group of the gentlemen of the nobility. Some of us received instruction. I was considered most gifted. 
I intend now to teach you a lesson, Jean-Paul. You're hot-blooded and bound to find trouble as long as you live. Have you ever fought with your fists? Yes. Oh, I don't mean the crude scufflings in the stables or the fields. I mean according to the rules of the prize ring. No. Then take off your coat. Your education will begin. Your first lesson. Never be taken unawares. Have a San Marlo, will you? Sneak behind my back, will you? Emma! Emma! What fearful thing is going on? Fontaine! Break through the lock! Stop, Your Grace! For the love of mercy, stop! Go for the surgeon. Fontaine, take him to your cottage. You're a stranger here. Yes, ma'am. I come from across the waters, from the land of the savages. Join our guests. Quickly, Mary, please. He must have received your message. He's coming. And being followed? Yes. Did you ask him to meet you here? Then I'll leave you alone. You're not fearful of being caught and punished. <laughs> what have I to lose? My life? What's it worth? I know. I know. I saw. That's why I spoke. I sailed from the port to dawn on the morrow. For where? For Spanish America. A treasure so great we could buy and sell the kingdom of France. Well, I... I don't understand. Are you proposing that we search for this treasure together? I am sharing it together. Why? Because Father Benoit refuses to translate my treasure map unless I take you with me. He says you could put a fortune to good use. I could indeed. If the curate trusts you, so do I. What ship? Where? What time? The Tropic Star at the port. Tomorrow daybreak. I'll be there. You have something to confess, my son. No, Father. I... You are to be congratulated, Francois. It is a rare man who has nothing on his conscience. I 
isn't with you. They put my grandfather in jail. So, what can you do about that? I don't know, but I, I must stay and help him if I can. Stay here and I'll catch you and hang you. What chance is an escaped bondsman to help anybody? He's right. This is what escaping cost me. I'm sorry. I can't go off and leave him. Goodbye and good luck. It's me, the Breton, the fisherman. I got into the jail, John Paul, and I saw him. He told me to tell you this, that you can't get him out if you try, and I'll hang you for trying. Yes, go on. He says you can serve him best by going across the sea, seeking your fortune. The gold unlocks any door, and the time passes swift when you're as old as him. The Tropic Star? The good ship Tropic Star steered south for the Azores and favorable winds and currents. then steered west for Spanish America. For 30 days, we never sighted land nor another ship. Until at long last, we reached the little known coast of Guatemala. And the less known port we sought on the Rio Dulce, which would be our jumping off place for the interior of this fabled land. Uh, let me caution you, lad. As we set foot ashore, not a word of the Golden Condor. Not a word about our map. thing must have happened. Those are coffins. that a fever had struck the villages on the Gulf. But we heard also of even more fearful disasters in the high country inland. It was with difficulty that we found two men who dared to take us up the jungle river. For they too had heard of the tragedy that had struck Antigua, our goal, the place that MacDougall had left many months ago. They agreed to take us to the head of the Rio Dulce, but no further. From there, we would have to strike off overland alone. The day came that we reached the walls of what had been Antigua and we found that the reports were true. A tragic earthquake had struck the place down. The 
This was my home. My daughter. He started to search the empty city for signs of life. Clara McDougall. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had been blinded in the catastrophe. And his mind was gone. We met a woman who had seen his daughter in the cleared area of the ruined city. Now word would spread of our arrival. Donda is ta Clara McDougall. Aye. Su padre ha llegado. shelter. after you left the first of the earthquakes came. And the mountain broke open and the quail waters came down. Thousands were killed or swept away. Those who managed to stay alive left. And you? Does it matter? Isn't the only thing that matters wrapped up in the parchment you've carried for ten years? Isn't that why Mother died? And if you found me dead tomorrow, wouldn't you push off again for the high country? Oh, it's different now, Clara. I found the priest. Then we do start for the Highlands. When? Tomorrow? We do. We'll start off again and we'll fail again. And then you'll find another translation and I'll be off again. The next time I pray that I die. Who's he? He's with me on this. hostile country, the most dangerous part of the journey. MacDougall said the hidden tribes here had never forgotten the conquistadores. Shoot. Walk 
Fece. Was it? Frey Blin Locha. My Alauta. Of Hatred. You're done easy. And let's go. What about our dead man? What about Clara? Don't look back. If we show fear, they'll shoot. He shot again. Don't look back. Don't look back. Go on. As the heathen idol. As his ugly face painted right here on the chart. Ten years ago I found him here. It's what gave me faith in this. It's what's driven me on each time it's been the jumping off place. South, east, north, nothing. Now that Father Benoit says this here means the setting sunway. The West, each day's journey a marker, all leading us to this. The stone serpent. And you'll find his fangs pointing to this, the key to everything. The great blue lake, Maya land. Maya land. And two more already dead. Does your chart say who's next? With daybreak, we had started hacking our way westward in search of the key to Maya land, the Stone Serpent. Five days we wandered, from jungle into the highlands, Searching for the marker and finding nothing but wilderness. Never a marker. Nothing. Something's gone wrong. Terribly wrong. The chart held true till now. Each day's journey a marker. It would be easy to miss the serpent, God. Perhaps we should go back and search for it. Search all that. I've chased wilder gooses in the ten year past. This held so much hope in it. Small wonder the treasure was never found. For want of a shoe, the kingdom was lost. For want of a serpent, so are we. Island castle I was going to buy, and four lakes to spit into, depending on the wind. A thousand head of cattle, ten thousand sheep feeding on the rich green grass, and the men to watch over them. Ah, there were once kings in the highlands of Scotland. But me, <laughs> I was going to make myself King Dougal the Third, and Clara a princess. Princess Clara the First. And you, with all the power and glory you could buy for yourself, could maybe be the king of France, and us kings. Never did a dream vanish so bitterly. I'm through. Finished. I'll bury this so deep that not a living soul will ever know its torment again. Give it to me. I'm not giving up. I haven't come this far to fail. You and Clara find shelter in camp. I'll go back alone and search for the Serpent God, the Marker. Uh, and in a week, it'll be me searching for your skeleton, and then Clara searching for mine, and then... If I'm not here in a week, you can go back to the coast without me. Goodbye. If it's never anything more, thanks for sharing your hopes with me. We'll wait for you, lad.
first time since I was a child he's given up. But you won't let him. That golden condor isn't just on that chart. It's a vulture that clawed his heart out and tore all the love and decency out of him until just now, just a moment ago when he became my father again. If I choose to give my life in search of something, it's my own life. You're insane, as insane as he was. I've heard of nothing but that treasure as long as I remember. Let it break your heart if you want to, but let my father go. I'm neither insane nor a fortune hunter. I have a goal, yes, and I need gold to achieve it. To right a wrong that affects not only my own life, but the lives of many others. That's my goal, not the treasure itself. And if you had looked at me with any kind of friendship at any time since I got here, I'd have told you that. Found it, lad. Maya land. The great blue lake. The chart holds true. Kiche people. Mayan descendants may have a village of them. Our gold condor may be the difference between us living and dying this day. Well, let the two of us go ahead and find out. Leave Clara here till we know. If they kill both of you, how long do you think I'd live? Come with you. Hey, array, Korea, treat a lock. They take us for gods. Kuwichi, Kuwiri Kat, Chila Pa Tekel, Ubi. The chief will take us to the ruins of the Golden Condor Place, Tikal. Aninichi Kishin Kenabit. He says the ruins have been forbidden territory to his people for two centuries. Makista Re Chika Shijosh. He can take us as far as the ancient boundary marker and no further. But of course, with us gods, it's different. There followed two days of feasting and gift-giving. Then the chief led us on the beginning of a six-day journey that, we prayed, would lead us to the treasure place, the place of the golden condor.
There she lies, darling. After ten long, bitter years, there she lies. If anything happens, these people are our friends. They'll get you back to the coast. And if something does happen, forgive me for all the wrong things I've done to make this moment come true. And will you forgive me? Of course I will. I'll strike the flint. lies close by. things I've gone through for this moment. And now we've got it. We've got it. Look about you, lad. This is the main altar. Heavy as Magdalene's heart. Solid gold and with emerald eyes. <laughs> this will build a score of schools for the little curate. Look. More engines. Take them, lad. <laughs> the people that own them have turned to dust. They won't care. Let's get out of here.
Missed him. Hang on to yours. If we both throw our torches at him at once, we can make a run for it. Now try. Hang on. The machete, quick. Where might I be? You might be a lot of places. If it weren't for the native people, they brought you here and their medicine man has been working over you for hours. I feel no pain. Is it that my hip broken? Or was I dreaming? It's broken, Father. But the medicine man gave you a native drug, so you won't hurt. These are a great-hearted people. You're leaving Claire and me in good hands. We've come a long way together. I'm not going to leave you when you're not even able to move. You hear him, darling? There's more to this journey 
than the gold and emeralds were found. the word for harem in Quiche language? <laughs> the thought never occurred to me. <laughs> Big barley. Chawila, a whip. Camo, iwala. Have you noticed the happiness in these people? Have you noted their kindness and friendship? The green meadowlands above the lake, the fine cattle and the woolly sheep. Does it remind you of anything? No, I've never known a place like this. Then I'll give you a hint. All it lacks is a castle. <laughs> you were going to be a king and Clara a princess. And Clara didn't want to be a princess. And well, lying here, I've decided that I don't want to be a king either. What of the castle? What does a castle offer that we'll lack here? You talk as if you're thinking of staying here. Aye, so I am. For the rest of my life. But what about the treasure? You know, it's a strange thing. I, I haven't looked at it since. It could be that the whole excitement was the chasing after it. Or maybe it was like Clara said. Maybe the condor was clawing at my inside all the time, and I, I had to find it to get rid of it. So you can believe him whenever you're ready, lad. And if you can use my share of the treasure, it's yours. I'll not need it here. Does Clara agree with all this? It seems she's been saying her prayers for ten years, and this is the answer to them all. Father told me of your decision. When will you go? Tomorrow. I've already spoken to the chief. Arrangements have been made. They will take me through to the coast. I don't suppose you ever thought of staying here? I didn't come here with a dream like your father, Clara. I came because there are obligations I must meet. And they involve my whole life things you spoke about on the day we found the lake. Yes. And the girl? I know. I'm going to miss you. And perhaps you'll miss us.
Good morning, monsieur. Good morning. Who's waiting? His Worship the Marquis de Marnay, monsieur. He insists on seeing you at once. Yes, he thinks you should receive the cross of the Order of Saint Louis. I don't. I told the king so. Who else? Le Comte, Colonel Lefort. Uh, he wants to be appointed. I know, uh, I know. Paris is full of colonels who want brigades. And bishops who want to be archbishops. Who else? An ordinary Frenchman, monsieur. A wanderer, it seems, who has a tale to interest you. Tell him to take a stair somewhere else. I've no time to waste. I'm begging your pardon, monsieur. I told him to go, but he laughed at me. He, uh, he told me to give you this, monsieur. An interesting calling card. The others can wait. Tell this wanderer to bring in his tale. Of course, monsieur. I'll give you five minutes. My time is not to be wasted. So I've heard. That's why I've come to you. Compliments are a waste of my time, even from princes of the realm. I've heard that you have influence, not only in Paris, but also at Versailles at the court. I won't deny it. That you can buy titles and pardons, make a man or break his enemies. Come to it. You know the Marquis de Saint-Malo in Normandy? Yes, he gambles on the exchange. He's my uncle and my enemy. You've chosen yourself a hard one. He has great strength among the nobility of the North. He's also a usurper. His title and estates are rightfully my inheritance. From my father, Paul, Marquis de Saint-Malo, now deceased. Ah. I knew Paul. So, what do you want with me? The chateau and the title, my rights confirmed in law. I wouldn't waste my time before a tribunal on so simple a matter. Why come to me? It's not so simple. It was never proved that my father married. Then why do you believe you have any rights? I believe proof can be found. But that's not all. I'm also wanted by the King's guard for an assault on my master, the Marquis, when I was his bondsman. A hanging offense? I knew that at the time. Uh -huh. You're quite a lad. You're like your father. I've heard that before. <clears throat> Sit down. You, uh, you ask? only to be confirmed in title in the states to which you have no legal claim and to be pardoned by his majesty for a hanging offense. Mm, that's all. A modest request. If you think it beyond your powers... Uh, keep your chair. The evidence may be hard to trace. The documents. It could cost more, I think, than you could afford. Is there enough there? What is your name? Jean-Paul. Well, Jean-Paul, I should tell you that as a rule, I should consider this a waste of my time. But hang me if I haven't taken a liking to you. Perhaps because you have fire. Perhaps because you have no name. But devil take me, you seem to be proud of it. I see no reason to be ashamed of it. <laughs> if it were a cause for shame, I, Raoul Dundell, would have died of it before I was weaned. I never knew my father. I took the name of Dundell because it was short, efficient, and wasted nobody's time. Dundell. And so, because we're in the same boat, I'll help you. It pleases me to be sentimental when it costs me nothing. Which reminds me, my fee will be a hundred thousand francs, if successful. I'll pay twice that if you ask it. Are you haggling with me, monsieur? When I set a price, I hold to it. Now, I need details. Your father was Paul Marquis de Saint Malo. Who is your mother? Louise Champlain. Where were you born? On a ship bound for the Indies. My father took my mother there. With no marriage? So they say. 
This is hard not, Jean-Paul. Perhaps too hard even for my jaws to crack. Your enemy has the law on his side, which wouldn't matter with Sue if he didn't have the power up there to go with it. Understand me. I shall have to deal with men of his own kind. Nobility who will be inclined to favor his case more than yours. Come back in a month. I'll keep these. They're safer with me. You don't trust me. I seem to have no choice, since I put myself into your hands. Hang me over head on your shoulders. But, uh, I'll need some money to pay a debt. How much? 10,000 livres. Keep your eyes open and your mouth shut. Your time is up. Get out. Smith, you seek, monsieur, is by the pillar. Oh, thank you, monsieur. many years ago. Once my work was the best in northern France, but... Perhaps you could repair it. I have no tools. There's no bench here. No room, monsieur. What if you were free? Jean-Paul. I guess if we're talking about the pistol. I haven't come back poor. Put your hand under the cloth at your side so no one can see. Here's money to buy your way out if anything happens to me. You're still hiding the Marquis. I hope to have my freedom in a month. Then I'll wait here till you... How can you stand it if you can get out now? I've stood it a long time. If I buy myself out now, they know it was you. Know where I got it. Someday I'll make up for every minute you've spent in this place. Turkey. If you need help, send word to me under the name of Andre Dupre at the sign of the signet. That's me. It's a good pistol you made for me, gunsmith. Sorry you can't mend it. My son, can I help you? I brought you a present for the parish. Jean Paul, my prayers are answered. I thought you were lost. Here is your school, Father. It's a heathen thing that never knew one day it would bring learning to children in France. And the Mayan chart. The Scotsman has no more use for it. Is he well? And happy. He thought he wanted a castle in Scotland, but he settled for a very blue lake in another highlands. He will be long remembered here, and for this blessing for our children. Gentlemen, I regret that my beloved wife did not live to enjoy this happy moment. I toast her memory. For five centuries, this golden chalice has toasted the betrothals of the maidens of St. Malo. And now, the latest in that long and lovely line has pledged her heart and hand to my young friend, Monsieur le Comte de Bayeux. 
May this union bring you joy and pleasure. Francois, inform Mademoiselle la Comtesse the guests will await her in the salon. This is the most important night of our lives so far. We shouldn't waste all our time on our guests. A thousand guesses. pardons, Mademoiselle la Comtesse. What are you doing here? A word, please. Something has come up. Will you wait for me here? moment for almost two years. My father said you were dead. Don't let him think so for another month. But there was no word. You said no word. I couldn't from anywhere. Not from the high seas or tropical rivers. Certainly not from the wreckage of the great city of Antigua. Nor from the jungles that lie between there and Maya land. Jungles? Maya land? Where are all these places? In Guatemala. Almost halfway around the world from here. What were you doing in all these fantastic places? Seeking my fortune, and I found it. I came back with it. Within a month, all these estates, the holdings, the title of Marquis de Saint Malo will be mine. But it will take a month. Until then, let your father enjoy the title. And I won't be a countess anymore? You'll be a Marquise, my wife. I brought you a wedding present. Emeralds. Priceless. There's more, much more. A king's ransom. Here. Jean Paul, if you do win away my father's title, is there no way that I could keep mine? I've been a countess all my life. I wouldn't want to be a nobody. I told you. You'd be my wife, a marquise. Yes, of course. Shall we seal the bargain? Someone comes. I'll be back. No. I'll send for you when it's safe. Where can I reach you? At the sign of the signet, under the name of Henri Dupre. You were looking for me, Francois? Yes, Mademoiselle la Comtesse. Your father requests that you lead the Gavard. How did you know I was here? Monsieur Le Comte was worried and I... the reins and put up your hands. Two minutes. You got yourself freed. With the money you gave me. After 30 days, 
only to find what they've done to you. Can I help you, son? I go to trial Friday, and I'll be found guilty. I can't even deny the charges of the Marquis. They're true. I did attempt assault. I am an escaped bondsman. I have no defense whatever. There's only one man in the whole of France who could help me now. Unless he can be reached, they'll hang me. Who is he? Where is he? Raoul Dondel, in Paris. I take the night stage. I'll go to him. Tell him what's happened. Tell him that if he doesn't help me now, and quickly, I'll be beyond help. God keep you. Hear ye. His Majesty's Tribunal for the districts of Granville, Avranche, and Saint-Malo is again in session. I have heard the evidence. I have noted that the accused has entered no denial for the charges against him. In the absence of this denial, I see no other course but to find the accused guilty as charged. <laughs> However, the court will recess while I give the matter final deliberation. He's my grandson. All right, we'll give you a moment. Did you see Dondo? Yes. After two days, trying all over Paris, I reached him at his own house. Son, he said he knew no Jean-Paul. He even denied he'd ever heard of you. I should have known. He has the emeralds and nothing to show they don't belong to him. I have reached a verdict. That verdict is guilty. Has the prisoner anything to say in his own behalf before the court Pass his sentence? I have nothing to say in my own defense, Your Worship, for I am guilty of the crime charged to me. And had I my life to live over again, I would again be guilty of the same crime, and again be prepared to hang for it. Let him speak, for ensure his death. The charge is that I, a bonded servant, attempted assault on my master. It matters nothing that the master richly deserved a beating. The law says I must hang for it. If justice were not blind towards those in bondage, it would be clear that tyrants such as the Marquis should not be permitted to make chattels of other human beings, use them at will as the victims of their brutality. Of all the bondsmen under his whip, I alone could defy him, because we are of the same blood, and because I had suffered a personal injustice at his hands, an injustice that is of no interest to your worship. But many others have suffered as much as I and more, because they have been broken in soul and spirit without hope of redress within the law. Your Worship, I protest. A man facing the gallows is privileged to speak. Thank you, Your Worship. I hold no grudge against this tribunal. I've had a fair trial. Your Worship has only done your duty towards me. I only hope that by going to the gallows, I can hasten the doom of this injustice. That the day will come when the Frenchman, whatever his birth, will be both free and equal, with full rights over his own person his work, the expression of his ideas, and the care of his honor and his life. And that if he chooses to serve under another man, he will serve him as a free man, paid for his work, but keeping title to his spirit and his soul. What the prisoner has said is interesting and largely true, but I must pronounce sentence upon you for the crime of which you have been found guilty. Your Worship! 
May I beg the indulgence of this tribunal? What's he doing in this case? I don't know. The tribunal will listen with interest to anything that Monsieur Dandel has to say. Your worship has already made his findings. The tribunal will hear Monsieur Dandel. But what the learned gentleman says is true. This tribunal has already found the prisoner guilty. On the basis of the evidence submitted, Your Worship, no other finding could have been made. The prisoner is guilty of the crime charged to him. <laughs> but only, mark you this, if it can be proven that any crime was committed in the first place. I do not understand, Monsieur Dondel. The evidence has not been refuted. The prisoner has entered no denial. Perfectly true. As I understand it, he is charged with attempted assault upon the person of His Grace, Edward Marquis de Saint-Malo. Then, Your Grace, I must admit there has been no crime. Since there is no Edward Marquis de Saint-Malo, and since the man accused of committing it is and was at the time of the alleged offence himself, Jean-Paul Marquis de Saint-Malo. A most extraordinary statement, Monsieur Tondel. But from one of your standing and repute... I'm prepared to prove it. If Your Grace will read this entry from the log of the British East India Company's ship, Calcutta Queen, which I but recently obtained from the Company's office in London, I will translate. This day, a passenger, Jesuit father, joined in holy wedlock, Paul Marquis de Saint-Malo, passenger, and Mademoiselle Louise Champlain, passenger. I have a signed copy of the marriage document and the sworn statement of the captain of the Calcutta Queen, who is still living, and of another passenger, a Frenchman, Henri Granot, who acted as witness, and others. He's named Marquis. Dondel from Paris brought proof to the tribunal. Gained his release. And Sam Mallow is his. Yes, can't you understand? He can evict us. You, not me. What do you mean? He wants me here as his wife. But what of your betrothal? What of the con? I've been weighing one thing against him, Anna. You've taught me well, Father. He gave you these? Ramoa? Then how are you going to rid yourself of the corn? Does it matter? No. It all has possibilities. As a fond father, I might even be persuaded to give my blessings to your marriage to Jean-Paul. I'm afraid your blessings won't be appreciated. I think it best you go before he comes. Oh. Yes. Yes, I'll go. But I won't be too far away. What does that mean? You're my true and beloved daughter. We understand each other. Yes? Strange fellow, Jean-Paul. Moody. Quick to take offense. What would he say, for instance, if he were to learn who told me I'd find him with the sign of the signet the night he was arrested? He wouldn't believe you. Jean-Paul! You mustn't believe what he said. It isn't true. Perhaps you could be persuaded to dirty your hands now, Your Grace. With the greatest of satisfaction.
I, Jean-Paul de Saint-Malo, desire that the estates known as Chateau de Saint-Malo, with its outlying fields and holdings, shall be divided among those who have shown me friendship and kindness. I state specifically to the curate of the village for the use of the bonded tenants, all the holdings in that area. The chateau and park I give to my beloved grandfather, Pierre Champlain, in partial return for his goodness to me. With the understanding that being an active man and fond of his trade, he may dispose of the property at his own pleasure and use the proceeds to set himself up once more as the finest of gunsmiths in his own shop. To the head groom, Fontaine, and his wife, I give the vegetable farms and the stables and the horses therein to support them in their old age. These lands to be held by them in fee simple as freeholders and free men as long as they live and by their children thereafter. It is signed Jean Paul, once known as Marquis de Saint Malo. Scotland. 